Hello everybody and welcome back. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Ben Dumas and I am one of the art teachers at Clarendon Elementary. If this is your second time joining, thank you so much. I really enjoyed seeing some of that artwork from the Frida Kahlo lesson last week. This week we're going to be talking a little bit about surrealism and Salvador Dali. All right, so I figured I'd start this week's lesson off by showing you a photograph of Salvador Dali, just to give you an idea of how truly bizarre he actually was. And just think, if you can get that feeling from a photograph, imagine what kind of feeling you would get if you met him in real life. Whoa, I look like Dali. How fitting. Cool. All right. So, it's impossible to talk about Dali without talking about surrealism. Surrealism was a movement, an artistic movement, that started in Paris a little after World War I. And the idea of the movement was that what your mind does subconsciously, meaning maybe when we're dreaming, or the thoughts that we don't necessarily even know we're having, are actually really, really smart. And they might hold some sort of truth. That's what surrealists believe. So, let's look at some of Salvador Dali's artwork and we'll talk about a little more about surrealism. And we'll talk about some of the other concepts they used to signify dreamlike states, right? So Salvador Dali and these other surrealists were really interested in dreams and dreaming and what kind of truth our dreams may hold. So Salvador Dali was one of the major figures to start representing dreams in art. And they were called dreamscapes. So you may have seen this one. It's called The Persistence of Memory. And it's often known as the dripping clocks. So this was paint, painted in 1931. It's a long time ago. And look at the amount of detail. And we're gonna talk about this painting a little bit because we're gonna talk about time and how time might feel a little strange or different right now to some of you. So Salvador Dali and other surrealists thought that time shouldn't be so fixed. It shouldn't be so constrained. Things should be more free flowing. Things should be more based on the idea of what they considered free will to just spontaneously do something. And I kind of like that concept and it's kind of helped me throughout the years. <laughs> so looking a little bit more deeper into that, we're gonna talk about this piece called Sleep. And it's again done by Salvador Dali. And this is talking about the fragility or how fragile sleep is. Now I'm sure you can see this big soft head, right? It looks almost like a big air balloon. And the head is being held up by these tiny little crutches. And what he's showing in that is that the little crutches, if one of those crutches just falls, then the dreamer will wake up and the sleep will be gone. And all of a sudden the dream will be gone as well. And if you are surrealist and you thought that dreams are really important, then you wouldn't want to wake up, right? And sometimes I feel that way. If I'm having a really good dream, and I get woken up. I'm like, oh, am I gonna, when I fall asleep, am I gonna be right back where I was? And that's how some of these surrealist artists felt about sleep and how, and that's what he was trying to convey about how fragile it is. We're gonna talk about softness and hardness. That was very important in Dali's artwork. But first we're gonna talk about something called juxtaposition. So juxtaposition is when you take two ordinary things and put them together in a way that makes it look extraordinary or different. And let me give you an example. So, say you have a lobster and you have a telephone. Okay, those are two ordinary objects, right? By themselves, they're totally plain and simple. But, if you put them together, they look weird. Now this is an example of a surrealistic piece of artwork, a sculpture that Salvador Dali did. And maybe he thought of this in a dream. This looks like something that would be out of a dream. And that's exactly what he was trying to convey. 
how strange is this? You know, wow, how weird. Now remember, this came out in 1930-something, in the 1930s. I believe that may have been 1931 as well. And that's a long time ago to be having these very strange ideas and to be very the, for the first one to be very expressive about them. Um, I'm sure people were talking about their dreams a long before Salvador Dali was painting them, but he was really one of the first people to paint them and to show their significance. All right. Okay, so now that we've had a chance to learn a little bit about surrealism and meet Salvador Dali, I'm not sure where he went off to, let's talk about how we're going to incorporate that into today's art lesson. Well, I thought it would be fun if we did a Dali-inspired dreamscape. And we'll be able to do that if we use some of those concepts and ideas that Dali used to achieve that dreamlike state, right? So I do an example every week, and I have a lot of fun with the examples. And I also have a lot of fun sharing them with you all. So I'm gonna give you a moment just to take it in, not say anything at first, and then we'll talk about it. So you can see I added those geometric shapes here. We talked about how Salvador Dali was obsessed with geometry and math and Albert Einstein, possibility of a fourth dimension, all kinds of stuff. It really interested him, the stuff that was unknown. I chose to add a soft watch there. I also tried to add as much detail as possible because we know that Salvador Dali was a very meticulous artist and he added a lot of detail in his paintings. And that gave you that sense of it was real and it was really happening. So up here in the corner here is a good example of juxtaposition. Now juxtaposition again is taking two ordinary things and putting them together in such a way where they seem extraordinary or different. So a good example would be, let me get a piece of paper here, this tree in the corner. So if you take the tree by itself without the pear, it looks like any old tree, right? And if you take the pear without the tree, it looks like any old pear. But once you put them together, they look very weird and different. Now, why would that pear be on that tree? And why is that pear so big? And if the tree were dead, could there be a ripe pear on it? Now, these are the things that make you wonder. And that's what the surrealists thought when they were doing their paintings, is they wanted to create that sense of mysteriousness and wonder. And I encourage you all to do that too. So keep an open mind going into the project today. Try to draw from your dreams if possible. Uh, you don't have to, um, just try to have fun with it. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the examples and stay tuned for next week. Thank you all.